Hi, I'm State Representative Kurt Mosser, and this is my legislative report. Today we're coming from our fourth annual Senior Expo, being held here at the All Home Days grounds in Elysburg. For those of you who couldn't make it today, you're missing a great event. Sorry you couldn't make it, maybe you can make it next year. We'd like to show you some of the things that are going on here at our expo, and some of the, the services that folks can learn about, the uh, different products that are out there for our seniors. Uh, the, everything here is geared towards our seniors, services and products that our seniors can take advantage of, and, and we're just so happy that they can get that information here in one handy place. So for those of you who couldn't, we're going to take a look around now and talk to some of the folks who are here uh, displaying things today. Now we're here with Linda Yost, and she's with she's a volunteer handler with Therapy Dogs International. Linda, thank you for coming, and tell us who we have here with us. This is Dale. I call him Dale Earnhardt, and uh, he's a therapy dog. He's been a therapy dog for maybe about three years, and he has a little bit over a hundred visits. And um, when you say he has over a hundred visits. What types of places do you go in where, where he does the visits? Okay, we go to Shemokin Hospital, and we go to Mountain View, which is a nursing home, and we go to Life Geisinger, which is an adult daycare, and VNA. And a couple years ago, we did Tail Wagger Tutors, and I think we're gonna start that back up again this year. I've had a little some health issues, but now I'm good again. Well, certainly he is the hit of the show. Everybody is stopping. Um, so he'll, he'll, he'll work with anywhere from kids to adults? Oh yeah, and yeah, and I, I like them doing the kids stuff because it kind of gives them a, a break from all older people. And I, I mean, he loves them both, but I think he should, I like it to be a little bit varied for him. When you shared a little bit earlier with me, you shared about another dog who had gotten someone to talk. And if you could just share just a little bit about what that was. Oh yeah, Buffy Sue. She um, died in March and I have her picture over there. Um, she, When I first started with her, we went to a, an adult daycare center and she went up on this one lady's lap and she was kissing her on the chin and the lady looked at her and she started to smile and she started talking to her. And I didn't think a whole lot of it, but the people that worked there said that the lady hadn't talked in months. That's, that is amazing. It's amazing what these dogs can do. Yeah. We thank you so much for being here and sharing uh, your animal with us and for what you do for the community. Um, again, he's, Dale is certainly the hit of the show, but thank you for being here. I'm Howard Stout. I'm with Central Pennsylvania Prosthetics Orthotics. We do prosthetics. We do uh, all types of bracing. We do uh, 
all type of shoes, diabetic shoes, custom shoes, uh, insoles, diabetic insoles, custom insoles. Most times, the, uh, an orthopedic surgeon will tell the, the, uh, the patient that they need some sort of bracing, uh, or if they are in pain, they should really go see a, their doctor and then we get referrals from the doctor. Orthotics themselves, which is the inserts, they will take uh, a lot of times, if your feet are hurting, your ankle will hurt, your hip, knees will hurt, your hips will hurt, your back will hurt. So it, it, your feet it, uh, causes all kinds of problems within your body. We do, 80% uh, of my business is probably prosthetics. Lower limb prosthetics, upper limb prosthetics, all custom. Uh, we do uh, the, the most up-to-date uh, microprocessor knees, microprocessor ankles, and the, uh, my, uh, the electric arms and, and pants. They see me, may, may, can be many times, can be as few as a couple times, but I'm there to make sure the patient is satisfied. Their quality of life increases is what, what I, the comments I usually get. They can reach me at 570-672-4580. I'm there Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Now we're here with uh, Tara Venna. And Tara, tell us who you're with. I'm with Family Home Medical in Mount Carmel. If you could tell us a little bit about the services that Family Home Medical uh, does for our area. We're a home health, hospice, and private duty company. We've been serving the area for 25 years, and we serve Northumberland County, Schuylkill, Montour, um, and what we do is we provide uh, the home health services, like I said, skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, uh, we do have a certified wound nurse on board, our hospice program, and we partner with our local community physicians, long-term care facilities, rehab facilities, and uh, basically see people after surgery or if they have a new diagnosis they need education on and some guidance and support, and we're very happy to be here today. Well, great. What, what could you add? Um... I see you're, you're actually a very popular booth and you're, you're, you're getting a lot of questions and what, what would they be? The questions we have is what we can do for seniors, um, how the services are covered, whether it's private pay, if it's covered underneath their Medicare or um, their other health insurances, and basically how the process goes from the referral on intake, the physician's involvement, uh, the family's involvement, and, and basically how many hours of care we would provide per week and uh, a lot of questions, uh, we're doing blood pressures today, so we have a lot of education on wellness, um, health-related topics today. So we're kind of doing a little bit of each. We're giving them information. We're talking about how to stay healthy, safe at home, and so. Great, well, it's, we so, so appreciate you being here. Um, the seniors get, gather so much information, and folks like you are a valuable asset to our community, and we thank you for, for being here. Thank you, Kurt. My name is Donna Kazawa. Um, I work at Geisinger Medical Center and I'm a diabetes educator. The type 1 diabetic is someone who doesn't make any insulin from their pancreas. They need insulin for survival. The type 2 makes insulin, but because of other issues going on in the body metabolically, they don't either make enough or they're resistant to using what they have. And so either one needs to be watching their carbohydrates and matching their medications. Unfortunately, a lot of us have pre-diabetes, which is oftentimes if you're not aware or visiting your doctor, you don't know that. But a lot of pre-diabetes turns into the type 2. Big thing is staying active and watching your weight, because that would help decrease resistance to your insulin. Because you do make insulin as a type 2, just don't use it properly. It's all about the carb. People say, I can't have sugars, and I have to lose this, and I have to lose that. You don't. It's all about the portioning and making sure it's right for your body and matching your medication. My message today is that sugar-free and regular can still have carbs. So it's all about watching your carbohydrate and then making the best decision for yourself. I have the regular Lifesavers and the sugar-free Lifesavers. And I have a copy of the labels. And if you watch, they both have a serving size of four pieces. 
And when you look at the total carb, which is where your focus should be, the sugar-free has 15 grams of carbs and the regular one has 14 grams. So the message is if carbohydrates are part of what you're eating, your body will digest that and make it a sugar and then your blood sugar rises. So it's about making the best choice for yourself and making sure that your medication regimen matches. Well, carbohydrates are carbohydrates. So whether you have a piece of bread or a pack of sugar, it's still sugar and it's carbs, it's carbohydrates. Sugar is our simplest carb out there. And carbohydrates turn to sugar. So one piece of bread and one tablespoon of white granular sugar is very similar in what it will do to your own blood sugars. So it's not so much what it is, but how many carbs and what's your portion. To be open to the information, um, there's a lot of wives' tales out there. <laughs> but seriously, it's about the carbohydrate. And if you just focus on sugar and you see a zero on the sugar, the carbs could still be there. So really, watch the carbs. Make sure your medicines are right. Talk to your providers, educators, your doctors. Make sure that it's right for you. Because everybody's an individual. But car watching your carbs and matching your meds is the answer. Lots of questions to your physician. Make sure you go for annual appointments. Blood work can help them see it. Lots of questions. Ask for diabetes educators. We're all over the place. Did you know that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the 3rd Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Did you know that the state capitol is not only the epicenter of the Commonwealth's governing bodies, but was once home to 390 preserved Civil War flags? During the war, it was customary for each state to furnish their regiments in battle with flags representing their contribution to the Union Army. After the war, Pennsylvania's military department was responsible for collecting the flags, and in 1872, they were reverently housed in the Capitol. Following the completion of construction on the new Capitol building in 1914, the Civil War flags were removed to the Capitol Rotunda. They were kept untouched in custom-made flag cases until 1982, when the Capitol Preservation Committee initiated its Save the Flags project. Throughout the years, dust and long-term vertical display of the flags had begun to devastate the brittle silk fabric and painted designs. The flags were removed by local textile conservators and were repaired and preserved in storage units that protect the relics from light, dust, and excessive handling. Now you know.
Now we're here and we're pleased every year we have the honor of having Senator John Gordner with us at the Senior Expo. Senator, again, thank you for being here and uh, you have a booth set up and see a lot of folks stopping by. What are the questions that they're asking you? Well, first of all, congratulations for having this again. It seems to get bigger and better every year. Uh, the weather's comfortable and uh, cooperating uh, and it's uh, it's just great to have all of the seniors here looking for information, getting information. Uh, the booths that are here really cover all the different topic areas. Uh, we have folks asking about uh, property tax issues, uh, about uh, the tax rent rebate program. Um, our recipe books have flown out. We're completely out of recipe books, so uh, we know that they're a hit item that we need to return. Uh, and just a little different types of things in regard to car registrations and driver's licenses and, and programs that seniors are looking for to help save some money that the state has available to them. So that's, that's why I congratulate you for having it because it really is a one-stop shop for them to come and get the information they need. Well, thank you, Senator. It's always a pleasure to have you here. The more information they can get, as you said, we have you here. We have uh, uh, some folks here from the Attorney General's office also talking about senior fraud and, and those types of things. So the more information we can get to our seniors, the, the, the more the, uh, they appreciate it. And um, we appreciate you being here today. Glad to do it. My name is Shane Green. I'm with Experience Works, and what we are is we're a part-time job training to employment program for older workers, 55 and older, and we offer part-time paid job training. It's about uh, 20 hours a week at minimum wage, and what we do is we offer job training. We offer our participants a chance to update some old skills, learn some new skills, get something current for the resume, and then we help them transition into regular employment. Every individual will come with a different skill set and maybe a different uh, need for uh, skills to be updated. But generally, we do a lot of, we offer a lot of computer training. That's one place where uh, a lot of our seniors take advantage of. Uh, so computer training, we do a lot of office training too. A lot of the seniors come to us and they want to um, maybe learn how to work in an office. They haven't done it before and now it's something they want to learn. And, you know, so we offer a lot of office training. We offer, you know, hands-on training. So we would place them somewhere where they can get some hands-on training in an office setting. A lot of times the question we get is, you know, you say the minimum age is 55, but what's the maximum age? And, you know, there is no maximum age. We have people, you know, in our program well into their 80s and older. You know, uh, I'm sure I read in, I don't know what state it was, but we're in 30 states. In one of our states, we had a gentleman in his hundreds in the program. So. And we get people from all walks of life, from all different reasons. You know, someone may have lost their significant other and they're forced into the situation where they need to work. Others may have retired and realized that, you know, they, they don't like staying at home. They want something to do. So they come to us and they say, well, maybe I want to try a new career, you know, start over and learn something new. And that's, we help with that as well. So like I said, you know, we get people from all walks of life, from, from all different reasons. And, uh, you know, we like to help anyone we can. We partner with other nonprofits. So, you know, whatever, and like I said, it's on a case by case basis. So we try to match our training and our training sites to what the individual is interested in. So if they're interested in manufacturing, we try to find something as closely related to that as possible and, and get them up to speed in that. Our seniors just need a boost in confidence, and we offer a lot of that. You know, um, One thing we do is we try to make them as comfortable as possible, and we always go to them too, so we wouldn't make them come to us. You know, uh, I have 10 counties myself, so if someone that's 100 miles away calls, you know, I'll go up to them, I'll meet with them, make them feel as comfortable as possible, and we ease them into things. We try to make it as, as least as t intimidating as possible. So we just try to, you know, uh, be as nice as we can and, and uh, help them along whatever path they need. Our local office is in Shemokin, Pennsylvania. They can reach us at 570-486-4041, or they can go onto our website at www.experienceworks.org. Did you know that on May 25, 1905, the Statue of Commonwealth was installed on top of the Capitol Dome in Harrisburg? 
Simply called Commonwealth, the bronze cast statue weighs in at four tons and stands over 14 feet high. In 1904, Roland Hinton Perry was chosen to sculpt this artistic figure, which he referred to as the symbolic embodiment of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Capitol architect Joseph Houston designed this bronze masterpiece with her right arm extending to symbolize kindness and with her left arm holding a ribbon mace symbolizing justice. During her decades of overlooking the city of Harrisburg, Commonwealth has endured periods of harsh weather leading to her deterioration and need for restoration. Prior to her refurbishing in 1997, Commonwealth was last restored in the 1940s. Under the direction of Rathgeber Goss Associates, the Commonwealth statue has undergone restoration and regilding to the form originally envisioned by her sculptor. Since being replaced on top the Capitol Dome in 1998, Commonwealth now graces the State Capitol building. Now you know. Did you know that in the corridors in the first floor of the Capitol of Pennsylvania, there are nearly 400 individual mosaics? The idea for creating these intricate tiles was first suggested by Henry C. Mercer in 1902. A year later, he received the commission to prove 16,000 square feet of pavement tiles for the great rotunda and corridors of the new State Capitol building in Harrisburg. Mercer set about designing subjects for approximately 400 mosaics. He chose as his general theme the history of Pennsylvania, and he soon realized that his tiles could tell stories. Although the arrangement seems random, the mosaics are very thoughtfully placed in the floor. The tile sequence is roughly chronological, beginning at one end with the scenes depicting the Native Americans. The mosaics progress into the story of European habitation in the New World and encompass the Commonwealth's triumph through process and intervention. Now you know. Did you know that the chamber of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives contains a painting depicting the 24 hours of the day? Located in the center of the ceiling, the mural titled The Hours was created by artist Edwin Austin Abbey. This wonderful masterpiece charts the setting of the sun, moon, and the many stars that grace the heavens. 24 maidens, who each represent an hour of the day, begin each day in light and gladness and ends in solemn drapery carried on still shoulders. Now you know. Bill's with the Pennsylvania Department of Veterans and Military Affairs. Is that correct, Phil? Pennsylvania Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, yep. I was close, but close thank you. <laughs> thank you, and thank you even more so for being here and, and uh, at my Senior Expo and offering um, some free literature and some advice to our seniors here. What are some of the questions that you're getting? Uh, we've been answering a lot of the different questions they've had about benefits and medical benefits and stuff they have, uh, whether they have access to the VA hospital and how to get access to the hospital and some of the, the criteria for getting into the medical care. Uh, some of them I've talked to have worked on how do I get a claim started because they didn't know they can have a claim started. So you have a county director of Veterans Affairs here in the county also, so we've been sending them to them also that they can get all this stuff together and have that submitted through the county director. Well, that's great. And we have our, our, our county Veterans Affairs director actually comes into my district office uh, once a month. If, you, or if you're interested in that, folks, you can reach out to our district office and find out when they're going to be in the office. Uh, this is a great van that you, have, that, that you have here. If folks have more questions, uh, you have a setup inside that could, could help uh, accommodate them, right? Yes, if they want to sit down and actually do a claim and get it all started so they can take it and file it later, we can use the van as an office just like we do at our office. We have computers, printers, everything in the office to do all that. Uh, we can sit down and help them with going over their medical records if we need to, wherever, whatever they need to help them complete a claim and, and help them with their benefits. That we, that's what we can do out of the van. Well, great. And thank you again for being here. It means so much to our seniors and especially our veterans who, who gave so much for us. Uh, we're just so, so happy that you could be here and lend a hand today. I'm Shelley Forrester, Marketing Director for Maria Joseph Continuum Care Community. We're located in Danville, Pennsylvania, and we have um, independent living, personal care, and skilled nursing. We have 100 homes and 12 townhouses, and just, you know, that's independent living. Um, and we have a, um, a community center, 
So you really, you come into a whole continuum where you know that we could take care of you on all three levels of living. So the next level would be personal care, and that's where um, you have your individual little uh, like apartment type setting, and you have um, your a nurse there, and then if you have any nursing issues. Um, and then skilled nursing, uh, we have a rehab there. Um, you come right from a hospital to us, or if you're having problems at home, you could come to our facility if you need long-term care and a respite stay. If, if a caretaker needs a little bit of a break, we could help you with those services as well. My advice for somebody is when you are feeling good, come and have lunch and a tour with us so we can show you everything that we have to offer so that you don't wait for a life-changing event. That's the biggest mistake somebody makes is they wait until like the husband doesn't feel good and then the wife has to do it by herself. Do it when you're feeling well so you can see all the services that are provided and that's the best time. You never should let a waiting list stand in the way because everybody is different at different levels. So even though we have a waiting list, um, they may not be ready to move in. You might have to sell your home and that might take some time if you're looking for independent living. So um, anybody is welcome to come for a tour and a free luncheon. We would be happy to explain all of our services. Our models, um, we have two bedrooms, everything's on one level. Um, all of our homes are on one level. They have a garage. Some of our homes are a little bit larger. It depends on which one that you want to pick. We have um, four different styles, I believe. Our mission statement, our sisters take care of a lot of, um, take care of the community. They, we've been here over 50 years, and um, that is really what, why people want to come to our facility, is the faith-based organization is our biggest um, um, seller. Our activities, we have um, a community center for our independent living folks with all different kinds of um, different organizations that they vote in to what they want. Um, we're always willing to open that up. Uh, we have meetings with them and, and they kind of vote what they want. We have men's clubs and women's clubs. Um, in our uh, skilled nursing facility, um, it's like specific to what's going on. If, if you're in the memory center, we have memory center programs for you. And in our personal care, um, we have all kinds of um, activities. Um, bingo is a number one thing. All kinds of organizations come in and they'll sing for um, our residents. So we're always open. Pet therapy, peace of mind, really. And it's usually when there's a life-changing event is when they make that decision. And that's why I urge people to come see, well, you're feeling good, so um, you could see what best fits your situation. Uh, call 570-275-4221 uh, and ask for admissions. Thanks for watching Legislative Report at my Senior Expo. If you have any questions, the contact information will appear shortly. Again, thanks for watching Legislative Report.